Dear friends and dear viewers, warm welcome on the Project Creative Society. Today we are having an international discussion with our friends, and before we begin uh, introducing our honorable guests, I'd like to uh, make the introductory word and say that finally, on the 4th of December this year, took place a huge international online conference, which is called Global Crisis, Time for the Truth. This is truly an unprecedented event that on one platform united people from 180 countries and was simultaneously translated into 100 languages of the world. This is truly an amazing event, which was organized by volunteers from around the world by people and for people. During the conference, we raised and discussed very current and very important questions for the whole global community and uh, voiced the real way out of the global crisis that we as a humanity is facing now. Uh, so today, during our international online discussion to, together with our respective speakers, we will continue to uncover the topics that were raised during the conference, as well as we are also going to share our impressions of this truly significant and truly human event. Uh, right now, I'd like to introduce uh, Kate, uh, my beautiful friend, a, a host uh, who is going together with me, asking our honorable speakers the questions about the conference and lead the discussion. Kate, warm welcome and greetings to you. Thank you so much, Constantine. Thank you to our dear guests for joining us today. And for our viewers, I would like to say a couple of words about um, the speakers of our today's international discussion. So first we have with us Niendo Kinyonga from Tanzania, and she's research and teaching professional specialized on environmental issues and sustainable development. Uh, welcome. Also, we have with us Andrei Pridna. He is an ERP architect, and he's from Canada. Welcome, Andrei. Um, as well, uh, Silvia Maraone joined us in this wonderful discussion, and she's from Bosnia and Herzegovina, and she's a coordinator for Italian NGO Ipsia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Also, we have Almira Nailova from Republic of Kazakhstan, and she's a lawyer, so she will share her experience with us too. And also, we have Dr. Surrender Kumar from India, and he's Australia Leadership Award Fellowship from Melbourne University, Australia on Public Health. Welcome. Uh, Dear speakers, we will start our discussion just in a few minutes. And before we do so, uh, I would like to invite you to watch a short video. This is like a short video from little snippets, little excerpts from the conference where the speakers uh, share vital information with people. And this is like maybe like a little trailer that will help us to... Um, kind of like dive deep into the atmosphere that was on the 4th of December and um, recall, remember what topics were highlighted by respected speakers. So please let's watch the video. Four months have passed since the time of the previous conference. And over this relatively short period, we have seen how much the progression of climate change and environmental degradation has accelerated. It's important not to remain silent because this survival of all humanity is at stake. It is time for the truth. We are now in a world where every single day, somewhere in the world, a climate extreme event is going to take place that will break the world record of that particular place. The European floods this summer 
or the Western North America heat wave this summer. Both of those extreme events were due to the jet stream reacting in very unusual ways, in ways that climate models did not predict would happen. But when I'm out in the field, I always hear people say that I never thought it would happen to me, and they're always surprised. Can you imagine how devastated you would be if you lost everything that you owned? If you watched the people around you, the people that you love, struggle and suffer or even die? We have to understand we're one people on one planet, and it's up to us together to solve these problems. We cannot leave it to our leaders. The leaders have shown that they are not up to the task. The leaders think of themselves as leaders of their own country. They don't care about the rest of the world. The problem right now is we've all surrendered a certain amount of our power to centralized authority, and they're trying to use that to take over everything. And they've been using this excuse of anthropogenic global warming in order to try to consolidate their wealth and control. So we've got to just completely abandon and expose that. The discussion about the climate is narrowed down to the reduction of CO2 and global warming gases. And I think the problem is much broader than that. Nobel Prize winner Sukuro Manabe showed that doubling of CO2 concentration would increase temperature without considering water vapor by 1.3 degrees Celsius, whereas when you do take into account the moisture content, the temperature would increase by 2.3 degrees Celsius. In other words, its increase is almost two times faster. Anthropogenic global warming is a grandiose scientific scam of the 20th century. When you actually go back into geologic records, ice core samples, volcanic data, 12,000 years ago it was Campi Fergali in Italy, uh, 24,000 years ago was the Tambora in um, New Zealand that lines up exactly with the cycle. Green energy is not green at all. Wind power is not green because wind farms require enormous amounts of concrete and metal to construct, disturb wildlife, harm human health with noise pollution, kill hundreds of thousands of birds each year, pollute our air and water supply. We pay high prices for something that will never meet our needs. We need to build a humanity that lives like a beehive and we have to build a society that puts human life First, if we combine our scientific, technological and intellectual resources, we can solve the problem of climate change. Let's follow the Creative Society's survival guide. The three easy steps. Learn more, spread information and unite to build a Creative Society. After all, this world is giving to all mankind with only one purpose to live and be healthy, happy, to create and not to destroy. The Creative Society is a project of everyone. We do not collect any donations or funds that disappear in the deep pocket. Instead, each person acts in their abilities and uses resources they already have. It is your opportunity to be a part of the solution and live out your superhero potential. Thank you very much. And let's begin our today's discussion. Um, the question that I'd like to address to all our today's uh, speakers, um, please share with us, dear friends, uh, your thoughts and please give us your feedback on uh, this event that took place on the 4th of December, the conference Global Crisis Time to, for the Truth. And share with us, please, what impressed you most? Uh, Almira, can you please start? Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank uh, our organizers for this meeting, for today's meeting, and for participating, uh, for this ability to participate in the conference, because what we are doing today, it is very important. And um, I would like to say that uh, this conference, Global Crisis, Time for the Truth, it left, you know, very just 
light impressions on my soul because the voice, such voice has been voiced, uh, uh, such voice uh, and such truth has been voiced that um, just uh, gives, you know, generally makes you reconsider relationships in general. And it is like a symbol um, that everything that is happening in life, right? Um, well, we are all responsible for that. And um, the truth has been voiced that uh, all the threats that we have today, right? This uh, one of them is the climate threat. And, um, you know, such global problems that we're going to have, well, our humanity has never faced it within thousands of years. You know, the scientists uh, had their own say and they gave the explanations and evidence um, that what we are really going to face serious problems. And um, the scientists presented many just uh, um, lots of lots of information and evidence uh, about the reason of the climate change as the cyclicality and um, so which uh, actually uh, leads to irreversible changes, uh, not just on planet Earth, but also on space. And the, these changes affect, uh, uh, again, not just our planet, but the other planets. Uh, so uh, we, this question is so acute today that um, I would say that, well, we have never had such issues. And, you know, dear viewers, I would like to pay attention to the fact that uh, when we talk about the global crisis, uh, and even if you take uh, the title of the conference, Global Crisis, Time for the Truth, but you know, what I found out that this global crisis is not only about climate changes, but it's about the way of thinking of people. Because uh, when I heard information uh, about today's slavery of kids, you know, um, that actually there are farms on which, uh, well, uh, inhabited by girls, so to say, and they are made, these poor girls are made to um, just give birth to babies, and then these babies are sold. Okay, it's, it's really awful. It's all really awful. What if what else information should we listen to in order to pay attention that we are all in a deep crisis? This is inhumane uh, things. And when these facts have, were voiced during their conference, personally me, I have never heard of them. And and, uh, you know, um, I could not just uh, help but cry because these are, um, I would say, brutal facts. And, and what's really happening today with uh, to our climate, yes, it's uh, one more problem. And um, each person should ponder over uh, the way he's living his life, whether it is humane or not. And the truth that has, was voiced during the conference, it is true. This truth cannot be just refuted because this is the truth which was voiced as a result of huge labor of thousands of people who had been looking for all these facts, for this information, for the speakers. And they proved that we are all, you know, in one step um, before the abyss. And in order, uh, right, uh, I would like to quote. To right now, uh, an example of Igor Mikhailovich Danilo uh, voiced in the video um, climate, it concerns um, about the future, it concerns everyone. So I believe that this example will uh, leave you not indifferent. So many problems we have, not just in the climate crisis, but other problems as well. And uh, that we can really um, just build a new format of society and um, we have the chance for the survival to go out of this hell, of this catastrophic state of humanity. And uh, including um, this way will help us uh, solve those issues that I have voiced. 
because the format of this uh, ideal society that could uh, really be built on our planet, it could change the whole humanity radically, and including um, uh, it could make each of us just live according to our con uh, according to our moral principles, honestly. So let me quote this. Uh, uh, words. All of us people are in the same boat. We are floating down the river. And excuse me, there is a waterfall ahead. And in order for us not to fall off this waterfall, we must all unite and row in the opposite direction. We can stay afloat. We can survive. But only if we all row together. Really, all together, not passing our oars to others, because this is our life, and we must fight for it. And our children's future depends on how how well we row. It is for their sake. If you don't want to row for your own sake, then let's row for the sake of your near and dear ones, for the sake of your friends and loved ones. But we have to row together and in the same direction. Then we will have a chance. And such a, a simple example uh, just uh, explains that everything that we are doing today, it's not for nothing. And uh, we can have beautiful future. We can build a beautiful um, society, happy society for everyone, where cheerful eyes of a child uh, will be so kind and will be just uh, full of uh, joy and uh, love and happiness. So let us, friends, let us get united and build this beautiful society but not just in order to survive, but to have a better future. We do not have the right to give up this chance, but we have to take the right path in order to build the creative society. This is the only society that has the right to exist on our planet Earth. Let's do it together, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Almira. You know, uh, the quote that you shared with us today, I think it's amazing. And you know how they say, united we stand, divided we fall. And this is what is basically, this is like the fundamental key point of everything that should be in our world, of every interaction, every communication, every relationship that we build all together. Um, Thank you so much for sharing your really inspiring feedback. And right now, I would like to pass the floor to Dr. Surrender Kumar. I know that you also uh, were, you know, directly involved uh, in the preparation of the conference. You were participating in the interpretation and translation process. So could you please share your feedback of the process itself and of the conference and the information that inspired you the most? Yeah, well, responding to your question is really an amazing experience, uh, having come in contact with uh, this, such a wonderful group, Creative Society. And I've seen the process, it's like more of a teamwork and coming together, a collective manifestation, what I've experienced over the entire uh, process uh, before the conference and during the conference and the post uh, scenario of the conference. It's like a collectivity. I have experience, uh, a teamwork, different mind coming together, different people coming together, different geography, different political stuff and different intentions, but uh, they're just coming as one mind, working toward a coordinated activity, not cross purposes. That's what I liked a lot. I see a lot of good uh, also practices of public administration during the conference, but it's theoretically speaking because <clears throat> What I see a different, you know, as like you mentioned, I think 180 country participating and then uh, there was translation of 100 languages. It's not some sort of, you know, I mean, just an easy play. It's definitely tedious, it's laborious and it's a huge and a massive task. So definitely it was a great learning and I highly appreciate this forum, this platform, Creative Society. And uh, I really took off that I was not familiar with this society or with this organization before. But I'm blessed. Um, and it's really an awesome stuff seeing Creative Society working on this platform and on this subject, climatological issues and global change and different things. And uh, another dimension which I would like to 
I, I should have think I should mention is like this. It's a my discipline is sociology. I was doing analysis and sort of integrative understanding in my mind is like uh, uh, what creative society is doing. It is all about solidarity, which is more of a collective solidarity, uh, social fortitude. That is like since my discipline is sociology. And we read a lot because uh, climatological issues and uh, climate, global change, temperature, and different things collapsing and clutter, you know, things are toppling down, devastations. Uh, they're all connected to one thing. It's like uh, <clears throat> uh, when we talk about ecology, environment, and climate change, they also have their share in uh, disaster and their occurrences. So when uh, we as human beings or human societies experience and try to respond, maybe a disaster or something, or damage. There are just two dimensions which I figure out. The two theories would uh, crop up and they surface themselves. One is like solidarity happens in a disaster or anything chaos that happens, solidarity will happen. And then at the same time, conflict will happen, such as like mentioning Emile Durkheim from a sociological perspective, he gave this, put forward this uh, theory of uh, collective solidarity. So, which I experience a lot, global society is doing what? It's like different people coming together from different geography, different country, different locations, different languages, interpretations going on simultaneously. It's like social solidarity, which is happening. So some people are environmentalists, they are topographical, experts or maybe they are sociologists, they are managers, they are IT people and they are communicators, linguistic possibilities. So what their intention is to form themselves as one family, coming together against this climate change, devastations, trying to respond, disaster management, response, recovery, rehabilitation, different things I've sort of the I've seen the entire conference. Uh, people talked about experts, scientists, researchers, and all. So it was an eye-opening for myself even. So a lot of things have jotted down quantitative and qualitative data. So that is one dimension which I am very much convinced and clear that collective, uh, creative society is a reflection and a manifestation of collective for, uh, uh, solidarity and social fortitude, which I as a student and a practitioner and a researcher in sociology, I firmly agree, but at the same time, the antithetical of the same is also there, which is conflict. When it happens, uh, we want to join together, conflict will also happen. Some people will oppose it. Some people will say it has a different connotation, different notion, and things like that. They would try to, you know, sort of nullify it. Different things are happening. So that is also, also okay. If that happens and is experienced, we must understand that uh, when we come as a family, as with collectivity and social fortitude, of course, when you want to focus the target, when you have common objective and commonality you want to share, you will be opposed. That is going to be there. So which I've seen, you know, sort of internet and Facebook and different social media, it happens. So these two things I've experienced, but majorly I would like to say that without any hesitation and fatos, it's like collective, uh, creative society, what I personally figure out, my personal interpretation is a manifestation for me of social, sorti uh, social solidarity and fortitude. That's what I just want to comment. Hope I've made points. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your feedback and your answer. Uh, I'd like to pass the floor right now to Sylvia and ask him about his impression of the conference and would like to hear your thoughts and feedback on this truly human and amazing event. Please share with us, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, watching the conference, my impression was, uh, let's say, um, optimist somehow, in the sense that my colleagues already <coughs> said a few minutes before, uh, but it's scary at the same time. Uh, what I was really liking, it was the fact that we could see what is going on all over the world, all together, finally. And this is a huge success, uh, having people from all over the world showing, imaging, and showing what is going on due to the climate change uh, gives us uh, a strong signal. The situation that we can see watching all that is going on from all over the world 
is that we have a short time to react to what we have been doing in the last uh, years, centuries. And we have no plan B, as we know. So it was uh, scary somehow, as I already told, because if we see all in the map, as uh, you can see in the conference too, or through the image or through the witnessing of all the people around the world, is that uh, we have big damages all around and uh, the situation at the moment seems that can just go worse. But uh, at the same time, I'm sure that uh, through this kind of uh, conferences uh, and uh, with the help of all the people in the world, the good people, the solidarity, we want to react. We can have somehow a plan B. It's not a matter of surviving, but it's a matter of living. We need to uh, strand to the values that are common to the human beings, and that is solidarity, being together, and uh, finding uh, new alternative ways uh, to take back uh, what uh, we have good in this world. So I think it's time for uh, acting, reacting, uh, um, and uh, we can only do it together. So I'm very grateful because uh, through this kind of uh, meetings and conferences online and also doing things in our single places, uh, I'm positive that uh, the situation can change in uh, better. Thank you so much, dear Sylvia. And, you know, I absolutely agree with you. When I watched the conference and um, some of the facts, some of the information was truly shocking and I couldn't stop crying because when you realize what is happening in the world, you know, you just uh, kind of like feel that, okay, we went a wrong direction a long time ago and we need to do something about it. And also on the other hand, you feel this freedom on the inside and you feel the, the happiness that finally this, this truth that what is going on in the world has been voiced, has been voiced in 100 languages. And right now people have an opportunity to understand and realize the realities of our modern society. And also right now they have this goal where they can strive to. And right now they understand what is the future that we as humanity, as society uh, deserve to have and deserve to build because we, will, we won't have it if we won't build it all together. So thank you so much for sharing. And also I would like to address the same question to Andre. Could you please share your feedback of the conference? And also, you know, please let us know what, what was new, you know, what information was new to you and, um, what did you understand after watching this 12-hour conference, the amazing event? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this great international dialogue. And uh, I would like to share my uh, um, opinion about uh, the conference. So what I was impressed by then and what I'm still impressed by, uh, I would say it's a large scale format because this large scale format was, you know, in everything. Uh, it was um, in the forthcoming events, large scale um, in the economics of politics and climate change so that occur and uh, um, and even the scale of the tasks that humanity faces today in order to overcome and to the scale of the information presented and some speakers uh, actually they have been looking for this information that they have voiced right for tens of years can you imagine that and the scale of, of uh, you know the just um, in conference uh, presented itself just a huge number of countries was presented uh, over 180 and uh, lots of languages, foreign languages, self-interpreting, right? Um, um, well, I was not able to take part uh, in the just um, 
in the help of technical team, but I understand, you know, as a technical specialist, I can tell you that it's, it was really amazing. Lots of lots of work has been done. And thanks to the fact that all the people um, have united together for the just common good, so to say, forgetting about themselves, about their needs. But if they participated and made this conference uh, true. So uh, I can say that this fact uh, really testifies that we can unite and uh, we can people work as a, you know, a single mechanism, right, so to say, or a single organism. And um, we were able to present such conference. Of course, some facts were really shocking and I wouldn't like to repeat them again. Uh, maybe if you haven't watched this conference, please watch it. But um, even, you know, I was impressed by the scale of uh, the fall so to say morality of uh, in today's society, but I would like to wind up uh, my say with a positive um, mood, so to say, is that, uh, you know, really, uh, 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 although we have a huge task to solve, right, but uh, the good point here is that it is not impossible to solve it. It is possible. And uh, this is all simple, actually, if people get united. Yeah. This is simple like that. Uh, people just get united and they do something good for all the people they do for the good uh, for the society. And so it looks like this. So lots of thanks to you for your understanding. Thank you very much, Andrew. And I'd like to ask uh, right now uh, Nyando. Nyando was uh, also participating in the conference and uh, helped to do the simultaneous translation of uh, the whole, this whole event. Also, she was helping with uh, translating into Swahili. Uh, Nienda, uh, please share with us your impression about the conference and what was new to you, please. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity to be among the panelists on this global discussion on issues, cross-cutting issues. During the conference, everything was impressive for me because what I come around and understand that different stakeholders, it means di different people are now aware that he, the global faces a lot of challenge from academic, religious readers, and the other politicians. So people are aware of what we are, we are, we are, we are facing currently. So this makes me say, oh, it means that we have the common goals from all aspects of other people. So that means we need to go forward as the, we can say creative people. It means now we have been seeing the, how we can go forward because we have support from all other people. It means we, we, are, we are in a phase now to create a society which is sustainable. And the on aspect of climate change impact, I think all this, all the speakers have been highlighted the impact. It means the impact and the indicators of climate change is already visible now. You can say to, to find the scientific, the scientific method or to find the other method to quantify the impact of climate change. It is almost visible. And the key remarks show that climate change is real and it's happening. And the, we can say that this is the, the, the good opportunity for us to go forward and address those changes. And the, something which it is not familiar to me during the conference, or it is new to me during the conference, that is my first time to translate. So it is a, it is it has been like what should I manage to translate? Though I didn't translate in a big part, but I learned to translate. I hope next meeting I will translate the whole night because in Tanzania time it was night, so I will be in the whole session. Hope so. That is all my insight I can say. Thank you so much, dear Niando. So and yeah, thank you for being a part of 
those true heroes who were um, able to provide the interpretation to so many languages so that people all over the world could hear this vital information. And also, thank you so much, dear friends, for sharing your feedback. And we prepared a little surprise for you. Uh, we gathered a couple of comments from, uh, from the audience uh, People commented on um, on the conference broadcast, and I would like to read out just a couple of them, and because I think they're so inspiring and uh, they're worth of sharing with you, because they are so uh, also in line with what you just talked about. So uh, the first comment is pretty short, but it's you know I think it's very nice to hear. Our power is tremendous. Our potential is endless if we unite. Let's do this. Let's build our dream together. So this is just like what you were talking about, friends. And I think this, this comment is so short, but it describes what we as people are capable of if we unite all together. And the other one is huge appreciation to all the team for organizing this. This is amazing work. This amazing work. Uh, done by thousands of volunteers all over the world. This shows how much we can achieve if we act united. This is the key. There you go. <laughs> you know, unity is, just like we said before, is the basis. This is the fundament that uh, opens our tremendous potential that we have on the inside and makes it everything possible, actually. And so the other comment that we also would like to share is, Great job. Lots of work was put into the making of the conference and this only by and this is done only by volunteers. Volunteers who stayed up for 12 hours straight, who let their private life stop for 12, 12 hours and this only to all this is only to inform everyone. Thank you so much for the effort, your time, your strengths, your hope and your work. Great job. Well done. I hope the information reaches everyone and most importantly, changes people's mind and heart so that we can all come together to stay together and help our planet as a unity. I love you all. So I think these are really amazing and very inspiring comments, and we just couldn't stop by sharing it. And right now, I would like to pass the floor to Constantine, and because I know he has a really interesting question, uh, might be a bit tough to answer, but yeah, go ahead, Constantine. Thank you, Katya. Um, the first question I'd like to address, which from my point of view is really really current in today's society because more and more people are becoming a part of this category. Uh, Almira, I'd like to address this question to you. And the question is, mm, from your point of view, what conditions should be created in the society so that such expressions as refugee, migrant, internally displaced, would not even exist in our world. What do you think about it? Thank you for this acute question, right? It is quite unexpected uh, as, uh, well, the comments of people were not uh, expected. You know, I believe that in today's society, uh, we have this, you know, crisis of uh, trust, so to say. Um, yeah, for some reason, I like this definition. Uh, why? Because we do have this problem with trust among just people, among our relatives or colleagues. And uh, it seems to me that in order to speak uh, about how to create conditions uh, in our today's society so that this even concept of refugee would vanish, I believe that we should, uh, first of all, uh, just um, establish such relationships between uh, all of us uh, so as we would have, um, in our interaction, we would have humanist, responsibility, trust, because what characterizes 
surprises the level of the development of any society in general. Uh, it, these are really valuable uh, features or qualities, I would say, um, because I believe that even such a notion as a refugee, it's, you know, it's like a slang word, and, uh, but we should accept the truth that we must live, we should live as people, we should just uh, give a helping hand to each other, we should uh, trust each other, and we should do everything possible in order to have this moral and spiritual values, the highest values in our society. And I believe that uh, we should change the format of society we are living in, because any, you know, boundaries, restrictions uh, that are between us, they should be eliminated. Uh, because uh, even we, we, we should change um, uh, just uh, even the will of those people who are uh, just are leaders of our states, but uh, so as to accept uh, the will of uh, the people who want to live in peace, get united. Because um, when we talk about the Creative Society project, one of its um, uh, profound foundations uh, is the development of the, uh, the human life and uh, uh, development of any society, right? It just happens when we really value human life. And uh, when such concepts of refugee or immigrants or something like that would vanish in our society, that was, I believe that uh, we should accept this basis as a foundation. So again, uh, human life is the utmost value and uh, we should carry carry out this principle in our everyday life, and it would help to eliminate, uh, to eradicate uh, this even notion of refugees, or because uh, these are people, they are just useless notions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Almira. Yes, the question was a little bit unexpected, but uh, it's also really important to talk about these things and to understand that human life has, has to be a number one priority in a normal, healthy society. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts um, on this topic. And also right now, I would like to address to um, Dr. Surendra, um, could you please share with us, uh, like right now we know that the, the disasters, natural disasters, they happen all over the world. They happen uh, simultaneously and their intensity and destructive power is increasing. And um, what do you think? Can each country deal with the climatic disasters on their own separately? Uh, or not? And if not, uh, how important is it to unite in the face of this climate cataclysms and other issues as well in, that we have in the society? So what is the role of unification in this process? Of course, unification is <laughs> very important in coming together, absolutely outstanding and imperative. And uh, that is like... Uh, thinking about your question is uh, uh, people can certainly different countries can handle natural disasters on their own basically and mainly they have their defense mechanisms preparedness warning system and manpower and how to mitigate disaster its effect and impacts and uh, on human life and human property and economy political system the entire gamut of social structure of course they do have resources and they're equipped also whereas like the theoretically and uh, well, as empirical is also developing countries are more hit by natural disasters as uh, compared to developed countries and Asian region is definitely vulnerable to natural disasters as compared to other locations and uh, geographical settings across the globe and variously definitely there are trainings there are equipments possibilities strategies and defense mechanisms to come against, mollify, and pacify the effects and the effects of any disaster, be it natural disaster or man-made. 
countries are trained up on the ground of their experiences, their expertise. But whereas like uh, talking about uh, <coughs> global unification and solidarity coming together is highly imperative and indispensable. Of course, I would say it's need of the hour because while we, when we come against uh, natural disasters as a global community, we share expertise, ideas, experiences, and uh, human resource also, different perspectives and paradigms also we share. And it's quite important for us to understand the relevance of different people, different geographies coming together to answer and stand against natural disasters because there may be variations of natural disasters such as like earthquakes may be more prone in a different location in a different country, whereas like flash floods may be happening in a different country more or avalanches may be happening, thunders may be happening, road accidents may happen. And... Uh, <coughs> So we must understand that uh, what kind of disasters we are experiencing more and how to handle them. We may not have that kind of expertise and strategies with us. The other country may be having, so we can uh, sort of transport those expertise, those experiences, ideas, or SOPs, standard operating procedures. But whereas what we need to understand this unification and solidarity, joining hands is very, very important because those natural disasters, of course, we do have some kind of scientific methodologies against them, like preparedness, uh, warning system, <coughs> predictability, coming together and sort of analyzing your data. This year, we might experience this disaster or that disaster. We understand. But uh, people have to be in the middle. It's not uh, disasters are not uh, just exactly technological or techno-driven dimension. Of course, it is or just administrative or managerial. It is, I agree. But it is a sociological issue. Whereas people have to be in the middle, they have to come in the middle. While unification and coming together of people from across the globe, I'm talking about, is like again telling and reiterating the importance of uh, coming together when people, importance of people keeping, uh, having in the middle. So unification and solidarity joining hand is definitely... <laughs> I would say need of the R and it is imperative and we just cannot bypass it. Whereas like I would just take very recent example of COVID pandemic, pandemic 19, just happened. We all still uh, face this and experience this in different formats and different shapes, versions. And uh, one of my recent research also have mentioned this. It's like uh, COVID-19 started for all of us, like we remember it's like from disease to a disaster. And uh, not even a single country was... Uh, impacted by it and many were infected many lost their lives and uh, of course many of us were not infected but uh, at the same time we must remember that all of us were impacted and we are still being impacted by it so in COVID-19 also the same thing happened the unification was experienced the solidarity was experienced across the globe I'm talking and people joined hands be developing countries or developed countries or uh, different languages, either you speak English or you speak your mother tongue, whatever it is, people ultimately had to come together and different voices were across, you know, just join hands and different things. So what I personally feel, the same stuff is uh, applicable and uh, there is a manifestation also. Uh, dealing natural disasters, be it any country specific, community or human habitation specific, be it uh, developing countries or developed countries. It is important. Unification coming together is quite important. And global unification and global coming together, joining hand, is definitely, I would say, very, very important because then you have facilitation, you create a platform, a kind of ambience where expertise can be shared, ex expertise and knowledges can be <coughs> exchanged and communicated and transformed. That's what the very idea, because uh, I may be not having much knowledge on how to handle earthquakes. Maybe one country may not be knowing about it, but the other country knows about it. Maybe the another country doesn't know how to handle flash floods, but the other, the different country knows about it. Exchange can happen of expertise, and then human resources can also be rotated around. And uh, by doing so, we can also club and sort of, you know, join together as a team and we can relate that different cultures can be transferred, different understandings and possibilities and dimensions can have 
on one common platform where interaction, dynamic interaction can happen. So once again, I just want to wrap it up that the unification coming together is absolutely, absolutely important and we just cannot bypass it. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Surendra for CR. Sir, uh, that's the unification I totally is supporting you, that the unification of people that thing that can truly change the world for the better. And again, we can do it together. Uh, right now, I'd like to mm, pass the floor to Sylvia and ask, Sylvia, you're helping people throughout your work. And share with us, please, how important is it to bring awareness of what is going on in the world now? And please share with us your experience in helping people. Yeah, I'm currently living here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I work for this Italian NGO, but I was uh, working, uh, helping people uh, inside this uh, NGO first as a volunteer. And uh, I also want to thank once again all the volunteers that take part in the conference last time. And uh, so from a volunteer, uh, this uh, started to be my job and I choose to leave my country. I am Italian, but I started living in the Balkan region uh, several years before. Um, the situation that I see daily is a situation of people that are uh, escaping from their countries. Uh, especially, I remember during 2015, I was going in Greece, uh, Macedonia, and Serbia especially. In that year, uh, almost a million of persons cross uh, the seaside between Turkey and Greece uh, to try to reach uh, Europe, a better country somehow, or at least a dream of a better country. But uh, we saw that the condition in which this person were uh, living were terrible. So the kind of help we were providing at the time was more material and support uh, with uh, clothes, food, uh, and the so-called uh, non-food items. Uh, what we saw is mostly that the people, uh, yes, somehow were in need for material help, but uh, what was more relevant was the psychosocial support that we can provide to the people on the move. So we met every day, hundred and sometimes thousands of people staying after Greece. I was working in Serbia and now I'm working here in Bosnia. So every day I go working in the refugee camps and I meet uh, hundreds of people daily that uh, need to talk, need to talk and express uh, their feelings. They tell us why they had to leave their country, what they dream for their future, what is terrible somehow is to see that these people is uh, traveling with the whole family. So we see women, children, old people trying to reach uh, a better future. And me being a European, I'm not sure which kind of future they're going to really find in the countries of destination they want to reach. But what we try to do is support them in the daily struggle and in the future struggle they will have. So somehow we try still to help, uh, providing material uh, support, uh, but uh, especially we try to speak with them and support uh, their mental health because uh, these people is traveling uh, like uh, two, three, four, five years of their life. Uh, they, they are mostly, the people that I met every day are mostly from uh, uh, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, and that part of the world, so Central Asia, Middle East, and they're escaping from war or dictatorships, so they're uh, searching for human rights. And uh, what we try to do is to comfort them and to try to tell them that there is a world made of solidarity, because for now, during this travel uh, they've been through, uh, they face violence, uh, they face uh, a lot of problems uh, with the police, uh, with the border police, uh, with the smugglers, traffickers, every kind of situation that they can face. But we want to show them that there is a world made of solidarity. There is a different uh, kind of option they can go through. So it's very hard and challenging uh, having uh, every day this kind of situation to deal with. Uh, we see people coming in terrible situation and physical condition. 
So now it's also very cold, uh, it's snowing, uh, the temperature are going below the zero degrees. So uh, we just hope uh, somehow that we, these people will survive. Uh, and it's terrible to think that they're just uh, trying to have a better life. Uh, the difference between uh, me and them is that I was born in a European country with a very good passport. And this is the only difference between me and one of them. I didn't choose where to born uh, and I didn't choose uh, where to born. So we all see in the end that we are all humans on one world, but this world is made of separation, differences, uh, privilege that we don't deserve. And also I am... Uh, Coming back to the topic also of this uh, crisis that we will face, uh, I'm very scared because in the future, the majority of the people that will leave uh, their country, it will not be only people fleeing from the wars or from the crisis, political crisis, uh, but it will be people uh, fleeing from uh, climate change disasters. So we expect in 2050 to have more than one uh, 1,600 of millions of people uh, li leaving their countries, leaving their countryside, going to the urban places and then leaving for other countries too. So we really need to think that we are just uh, uh, facing a disaster and we know that this situation will come out so we need to avoid it in time. That's it from my side. Thank you so much, dear Silvia. So much. Yes, thank you for uh, actually bringing up these facts and sharing your life experience, sharing your, um, you know, your story. And truly right now, after listening to you, after watching the conference, after listening to our respected speakers today, uh, I really understand that today more than ever is the day when we need to build the creative society. We need to ensure and guarantee the safety of every human on the planet Earth. And especially when we understand that the cataclysms are increasing and everything that is happening right now is not giving us a helping hand for sure, we really need to unite, you know, to bring on this solidarity on the first place and to truly remember that we are human beings. And just like you mentioned, Sylvia, the only difference that we have is the passport with the rights and who made this passport up? People did. So we truly need to think of an alternative, think of another format of society where human being, human, person, every person on the planet Earth will be the highest value. And then once we unite, then we can come up with all the solutions and make this world a better, better, better place for everyone. So thank you so much for, for sharing this. And um, I would like to address the next question to Andre. Um, I know since you're working in this technical field, I would like to ask you, how important is it to dig into the issue, to dig into the problem and to understand and see the root of the problem itself and how can this help us to overcome all these difficulties that we experience right now and will face in the near future yes sure well um, if we take the technical issues right one of the most important thing is uh, just to decline uh, or to, to define what the problem is um, because when it happened um, you know then to change uh, something well or make it better all right it becomes clear and uh, what needs to be done right and the conference uh, that we are talking about that took place the uh, global crisis time for the truth it actually brought to the surface all the dead ends right that we are facing today and now we it is clear to us what ne uh, we need to do and we understand that this is the unification of people that's what we have to do to get united because human life uh, this is just the highest value there is nothing more valuable than human life 
And I have to to say that, uh, you know, this is the main uh, right fact. And anything else, of course, it is like additional, you know, um, conditions and because even right uh, well even technology right uh, from the point of view of technology we are kind of um, already united right because we have this opportunity to see each other to talk with the Zaja from different uh, countries and uh, even from the technical point of view right um, we uh, just have just to move forward to solve the issues thank you very much Andrew um I'd like to touch a little bit the question of interpreters and their role in doing that positive thing is as informing people. Uh, since I was participating also in the conference, uh, both as a speaker and the interpreter, and my understanding of interpreting is that if you're translating from any language into your mother tongue, you're becoming some kind of a gate of information for people and informing them about what's happening in the world, about the current issues and the way out of those issues. Nienda, um, you were uh, interpreting the conference. What inspired you to participate in this event and devote your time, your skills to simultaneous interpreting of the conference into your native language. Share with us, please. Okay. According to the law which I pray during the meeting, I think he sharing the information to your, to your people, it means like a, 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 I'm telling my community, I'm telling the society what is happening. You know, they, they, I think this is the, a big opportunity for my society because might be they will not understand before about the issue, but he, when they find someone within their locality, it means giving the information about the truth of something, it means it's very easy for them to understand. So this inspired me a lot because I'm, 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 I'm working on the issues of climate change and the other SDGs like waste management, sustainable city, especially on the waste management. So transforming those information to the community, it will be easy for them to understand what is happening within the world today. Because other people will say climate change is not impacting my area. What is climate change, by the way? What, how do people are saying? So transforming those messages to the local community or to the native language, it is easy for them to understand what is happening and the, what they are supposed to do to make this uh, planet the better or to make the adaptation mechanism because we need to adapt or to mitigate as they are, our role as the people or this is our role because there is no option we can say there is no planet B so giving information to someone is very easy way to act thank you I think so you much. I can say that thank, thank you Niendo so and uh, what do you think um how the situation will change if everyone takes an action because you just mentioned that it gives them the possibility to act and what in your opinion what kind of world we might have if every person in the world starts to actually implement and practice this wonderful skill of acting all together yeah i think uh, if everybody know the responsibility of protecting the earth I think we, we will never reach at this stage. Because if you know I suppose to consume sustainable, if you know I suppose to protect the environment, if you know I suppose to create the peace and security and to avoid the conflict, it means you play your role and the, 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 the earth will be the better place for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. And also, we have another um, comment that we found on, uh, on under the broadcast of the conference. And um, I would like to read it out. It's pretty short. And then I'll ask uh, probably the question to all of you, dear friends. So the comment states, bringing awareness, alert, 
inclusion, and people's participation to the maximum is the need of the hour to combat the problem. So the question would be, uh, what do you think? How can each, like, what can each person do right now locally in order to spread the information, to bring this awareness uh, about what is going on in the world, about the conference that was held on December the 4th, and about the Project Creative Society? And why do you personally think that Creative Society um, is really vital for us right now as humanity? So who would like to go first, guys? Maybe Almira, <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Great, thank you. You know, you said such a great question because people are already starting to get ready uh, to talk about the conference. And I believe this is happening because people got this, you know, inner response uh, to the conference, to this information, so that they feel this need to get up and do something for the benefit of people. And uh, right now, yes, we are talking about uh, the first um, uh, stage of building the creative society, this is the informer um, stage, right? And you can read about uh, the stages of building a creative society on the website. And I would like to say that, uh, right, this global informing of people by any means, right? And of course, um, the most um, uh, well popular means is social media. Because you know that uh, whoever you ask today, and uh, um, I've talked to many people, in, so um, I see that people do have this um, kind of demand uh, of for just changes, changes in the society. And um, uh, when you tell people that the creative society is what we really need, right? Uh, because, and we need to build a creative society in all the countries. We cannot solve, you know, these uh, global issues by solving some local ones. And uh, that is why it is very useful today, um, you know, to spread information in any form in social media, and this, uh, well, any person can do this. So these are interviews or social polls or um, when we uh, ask people in social media what society they would like to live in and uh, uh, what's their opinion about the conference and um, what should be done to solve our today's issues. And uh, I would say that, you know, I observe that people are really listening to this information attentively. And uh, they say, yeah, all people uh, accept that until we change this inner attitude inside us, right, uh, to society, to people, then we won't see any good changes in general. And um, as for the second uh, part of the question, can you repeat, please? Yes, so why do you personally think that a creative society is right now vital for all of us? Right, thank you for this question. And uh, right, when we are talking to people about the necessity to change the format of society to the greater one, right? Um, yes, and we, you know, we discuss these issues, but we really come to the conclusion that creative society is the only, only format with the only f platform that gives uh, all the benefits, right, to all the people. And uh, of course, it's vitally important to form such a vector of uh, our de uh, development uh, there so that uh, human life would be at the basis of our society and uh, would be most valuable. So, and then we'll be able to resist all the challenges of just uh, climate changes happening today because then we'll be able, to, well, to get united on these vital, important and uh, values of just human life, right? And respecting each other. And uh, if you ask even your friends, anyone, right? Uh, so 
anyone would be first thinking uh, about his or her life. And when we, you know, we have problems when we do not put human life at the first place. And that is why, friends, I believe that uh, we should spread this information uh, that uh, in this conference, uh, un understand the recent understanding for the necessity to build a creative society in order to tackle this climate change issues and then uh, this uh, climate creative project it is very important in order to build a better society that is why creative society is what really can change the vector of uh, each person's life this is most important which will allow us to uh, radically change change the course of historical events for the better ones and as the prophets have strived and told us to do. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sarandro, we'd like to address the same question to you. I'll probably repeat it. Um, from your point of view, what each, what can each person do right now locally, at least locally, um, in order to spread the information about the conference as well as the fact that there is a way out which was announced during the conference, and that is the Creative Society. Uh, why do you personally think that Creative Society is vital for us and as a humanity right now? Share with us, please. First, it's like uh, the question is to be divided into two. Uh, the Creative Society dimension, which is I would cover later. later. The first is individual call. <laughs> has to happen within individuals, like how to proceed further, how to respond to uh, situations, how to take uh, and personally cause awareness on yourself about the need on climate change, like disasters and climatological issues. That has to happen. And that will only happen when we have uh, personal education and personally we are aware of it. And it's not just personal awareness, but that uh, individual awareness has, has to cause uh, collective awareness also. The entire battle, I guess, is between psychological ex uh, reality and existential reality. For many of us who understand, like uh, people, uh, people part of creative society, or maybe they are joining this conference or they attended this conference and they were pre previously part of this and they're still connecting, they take climatological issues and challenges and global warming and natural disasters, man-made disasters as a, a existential reality. They understand the impact of it. Whereas many of us uh, who are maybe not part of it and they think it's just kind of crap talking about global change, uh, climate change and climatological issues and uh, disasters, and uh, we are not experiencing any disasters and changes in climatological issues. That is their psychological reality, which has to be transformed from psychological reality, reality to existential reality. Whereas individual call, I would say, has to happen in each and every individual. They must know the reality. They must know the <laughs> uh, emergency of uh, understanding global change and climate change and positive uh, possible ill effects of uh, natural disasters and man-made disasters also. So this sensitization has to happen uh, in those people. And uh, when it's like uh, responding to such kind of situations, which normally people don't want to, and they don't want to train themselves up and hone th themselves up in such kind of understandings, we require a platform. And how will a platform happen? Because it's all about, I guess, a behavior change. I was just reading a psychological theory in uh, how to change a behavior. It's like a, a pre-contemplation, then contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance stage. So what we, I personally believe, all of us have to arrive at that maintenance stage where uh, any change behavior has to happen without an active thinking. It should be just a spontaneous, dramatic response. So these climatological issues, disasters, and global change, environmental and ecological things, uh, we just don't have to think twice. We must immediately respond to such kind of catastrophes and damages, antithetical situations, anti-developmental possibilities and sustainable possibilities. How will that happen? The only thing we need to prepare ourselves from within 
because there are two ambience one is like uh, external ambience of course we are all there joining hands to cause betterment in our external ambience but the first the different uh, first dimension first ambience is our internal ambience that is why i say individual call has to happen in individuals that's one dimension but when the going gets tough the tougher gets going we all know so this now comes the role of creative society but there's like people joining creative societies hearing about it and should have been you know, learning because i take it as a learning platform it's not just interactive platform or sharing your expertise experiences and uh, should have you know shortcomings or maybe success stories but at the same time it's a repository it's a data bank for a lot of success projects and informations where people can train themselves up not just themselves up but other people, <coughs> i would say others also other people also cross them around them so joining creative society and sort of sharing your thoughts your experiences your learnings expertise and kind of experiences you have when also looking at people's research kind of quantitative and qualitative body of data they share there like they did in conference a lot of pictorial video uh, pictorial informations were there videos were there research informations were there quantitative was there and the qualitative large body of data i have seen in fact i would be asking some, asking some of the data so that i too can sort of you know, take some help in my research so <coughs> the vitality of creative society is definitely very categorical it is candid indeed and why it is candid it's not just because i'm at this point of time part of it and i'm just say i'm just blurt it out i mean it why because definitely it's a common platform encouraging commonality whereas you can experience different possibilities different pitches and different learnings also and you not only learn for yourself you also cause learning for others also if you have questions maybe disconnects challenges you experience you can definitely ask some of the people here they may be experts in those areas they may have some good number of experiences in creative society they will pass on the information understanding or their traditional know how or knowledge or modern knowledge so you can train yourself up you can equip yourself for the battle in a more <coughs> uh in a more uh equipped way so that can definitely definitely help you so i personally believe that the role of creative society is really vital in causing education awareness sensitization and mass awareness i would say among people because individuals can definitely help and it is important individual call has to happen but at the same time that commonality that collectivity also has to be has to come into the picture and have some manifestation and how will it happen when you have such a large network which is like uh, just recent example is like uh, 180 country broadcast and then 80 languages being translated into that's a big and massive success i would say so if these things happen like once in a year twice in a year or maybe some round table different things different discussions expertise can be communicated knowledge can be shared information can happen and the awareness level would definitely go dramatically and drastically very up so this is going to create a massive uh platform a massive damage to such kind of events which can take a toll on human life and property thanks a lot thank you so much dr surrender thank you yeah constantine you would like to share something Uh, no, I, I just didn't want to interrupt Dr. Sarandra and in the end I just said thank you Dr. for sharing um, with us. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, right now I would like to address to Sylvia. Sylvia, um, what do you think about it? Uh, how, what can each person do locally to basically spread the information? What in your opinion are the best tools to use? And, um, you know, you already shared uh, from your experience that you talk to people, you try to comfort them. This is probably one of the best ones, but what do you think? How important is it to spread this information uh, that was shared during the conference and about the project? And why in your opinion, it is really vital for us to, uh, you know, move away from this consumer's format and really build a creative society a society where we as humanity will prosper yeah thank you for asking uh, 
I think that uh, the things can be better, let's say, in a global level if we act uh, in our individual level, because we cannot expect uh, big changes, especially we cannot expect that the uh, politicians all over the world uh, will ever do something to change the kind of situation in which uh, we all are. And I think that the change comes from uh, individual choices that we can make. So, for example, uh, thinking on the environment, it's pretty much clear that uh, we can choose. We can choose uh, where to throw some kind of garbage to make the proper selection of the garbage, for example, to reduce uh, reduce uh, plastic, reduce every kind of material that cannot be uh, transformed again. We can choose uh, not to eat some kind of uh, foods. We can choose not to consume uh, GMO elements. We can choose uh, not to uh, eat uh, animals from intensive farm if we still eat the meat. We can choose to change the things from the small steps that we can do every day. Not to throw a small piece of paper uh, outside from the garbage bin. This is uh, the first uh, step that we can do uh, to really ch change the things. And the second pillar, and this is what I also like, let's say, about the creative society idea, is that uh, everything starts from some kind of uh, uh, important stage that are the uh, human life, uh, human safety, human freedom. And I think that is uh, basic uh, starting from education educating uh, not only the new generation, probably they are uh, a step forward, but also to educate some kind of generation that didn't understand that uh, with their ex, what have they, they've done in the past is now affecting the future of the people. So I think education is the most important pillar to build a better world, a better society. And uh, I'm very grateful for this kind of occasions to share our thoughts and to try to reach uh, as many persons as possible. Thank you so much, Silvia, for the answer. Andrew, uh, right now we'd like to give the floor to you and ask you uh, what, from your point of view, each person can do right now in order to spread the information about the conference and why for you personally, creative society, you think that it's vital for us as for humanity right now? Share with us your opinion, please. Thank Константин. Thank you, Konstantin. Right. The most important thing that each person can do in today's situation is just not to keep silent and start to speak up, not start spreading information um, that uh, the creative society, this is the society that we can all build. I would like to give an example, you know, from my personal uh, experience that I've just decided not to be silent, but start spreading spreading this vital information about my friends and acquaintances. And uh, after I've just made this decision, you know, one of our local television channels in Canada decided to join our International Creative Society broadcast and uh, show the conference in its full format. And then, you know, even the second uh, professional channel, right, um, join us, uh, in, uh, well, uh, second in the general um, in Moldova also joined and showed um, spread the information about the International Conference Global Crisis Time for the Truth. So even the speakers also noticed that people um, just resonate positively with this information that each would like, each person would like to live in a happy society, in such a society where human life would be appreciated. And um, I was, uh, of course, we all see that um, this consumer form of society that we're existing today, it is all uh, well uh, leading us to the deadlock and nothing good in such society can be happening but we all need such a format of society as the creative one that we all can get united for the benefit of all people of uh, the whole 
planet and the whole humanity and only just having all these values and following them, we can resist anything evil, anything bad. We can cope with everything, all the issues. And uh, that is why this conference, it just uh, has shown that the real example that people who have united, they made it possible, okay, they, they organized this conference and it is, you know, it will actually, uh, this uniting of people is already happening today. It's not going to happen, you know, in far future, but it is happening today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you for sharing this really inspiring examples when not only just people, uh, like ordinary people like you and me, are spreading the information, but also the TV channels are starting to join this process and share the information, spread it even more widely, uh, you know, between their, the people of their countries so that we could be informed. And when we are informed, then we are prepared. And this is like also one of the key points. And dear Niendo, uh, could you please share your opinion and your understanding of what can each person do locally to spread the information as much as possible to bring this awareness and to basically inform people that there is uh, an amazing way out, amazing solution, which is creative society. And why do you personally think it is important right now for all of us as human beings living on the planet Earth? Okay, thank you, Katie. I can start by saying that why creative society is vital. For me, creative society, I can say it's a good platform for people to, to, to create awareness about the issues, cross-cutting issues which we are facing today. Uh, I can say that we are having a lot of issues from these small few days to come because we have been trained to, 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 to have different ways of transforming those messages. So creative society is vital because we, we, as Dr. Kumar says, we get a lot of information from qualitative data, from scientist findings. So that is the area where we can get information and then we can disseminate it to our local community. And the, what are the tools that can be used to disseminate those information? I think social media is the best tool to disseminate information within the local area or any other area. Because I, I know creative societies through social media. So you can't avoid social media nowadays because it's the best and the easy way to get information. And if we can use social media, though in some of the developing country issues of information through those social media is difficult, I think we can, issues of conducting the physical workshops, you can go and meet some community and then you transform those messages. It will be the best tools to those community which you lack of those current modern technology of transforming the message. I think that is my observation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, dear viewers, uh, we are coming up uh, to the end of our today's conversation and would like to say that if you have questions regarding the Creative Society project, how to build the Creative Society, or you would like to participate in the Creative Society project, uh, please send us your questions to the email, which is info at creativesociety.com. Uh, your questions uh, we can address to our speakers during the conversation and uh, hear their professional answer. Also, we're inviting you to visit our website, which is creativesociety.com, where you can learn more about the project um, Creative Society and know how to join the Creative Society project and start participating in it actively. So uh, please welcome, waiting for your questions, and uh, we need you as well. 
Yes, thank you so much, Constantine, for sharing this information. And I would like to pay my gratitude to all our dear speakers for today's amazing conversation. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you for sharing your opinions and your knowledge with us and dear viewers. And um, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. And um, Yes, we would like to invite all of the viewers, all of the people in the world to watch the conference that was held on the 4th of December, Global Crisis, Time for the Truth, because this event is really eye-opening. The information that was shared is really painful sometimes, but this is the reality of our world right now. And after watching it, then we basically get a chance to decide what is the world that where we would like to live in, whether we want to leave it just as it is, or we truly want to unite, come in solidarity, you know, give a helping hand to each other. And by joining these efforts, build an amazing world where each and every person can develop, can prosper, and can really live happily, just as we all are made to. Thank you so much one more time, and we'll see you soon on another broadcast of the International Discussions on the Creative Society channel.